because you were at Cape Canaveral, correct? I was there. Yes, I was. John had an old friend who worked for NASA, and he invited us down to Florida for it. Our daughter was two. Little Sarah. Huh. You know, I still have a picture of her with the moon, with the moon rocket in the background, and before the launch, and her waving one of those little American flags. She was so beautiful. What was it like? Loud. Oh, my. Honestly, all I can remember, it, it was incredibly loud. <laughs> really awful. <laughs> we were seated on these metal bleachers, and they were shaking. I mean, we all had earplugs, but I mean, they really, they weren't enough. Little Sarah got the worst of it. I mean, there just isn't any way you can prepare a child for something like that. <laughs> Here we were at this momentous occasion in our history. And all I really can remember is little Sarah's bright red face, all scrunched up and the tears rolling down her cheeks. <laughs> I put my hands over her ears. I mean, that's all I really could do at the moment because there wasn't any way you could get away from the noise. And just as I did that, I felt something slip down over my ears and I turned around. It was John. <laughs> there we sat, the three of us in a row on those rattly metal benches. <laughs> and my hands were covering Sarah's ears and John's hands were covering mine. <laughs> it just gave me the giggles. <laughs> John had a way of doing that. He had, a, he had a way. He had a way to take a moment that uh, that you could get lost in, you know, and and turn it around, make it just for us, just for him and me, well, and also the children. I mean, he could have easily been distracted by the whole spectacle of the thing, you know, or even or even annoyed because of Sarah, but no. He, had, he, he took that moment that really could have been dreadful. And he, and he turned it around and made it special. That's just the kind of guy he was. <laughs>